Hello, this is Ju. Hey, look, we're back to my Xbox again. Now I have one more, hopefully last repair to show you on this Xbox. I've already shown you how to uh, fix a, the, the disc tray that doesn't come out. I replaced the uh, clock capacitor out of this thing. But there's one more issue and that is it just does not read game discs. And so that's a big issue. And so I believe uh, I've already kind of tested some things out. I've cleaned the head uh, or the laser head of this uh, of this thing. I've also kind of uh, fiddled with the uh, potentiometers. And I'll kind of show you how to do that uh, in this video uh, if you're interested. But uh, basically the things I've done has not improved this disk drive. And therefore, I'm going to replace the actual laser, the reading laser for this for this Xbox. And that's what I'm going to show you today. OK, so the first thing we have to do is open this thing up and get all the way to the disk drive itself, which is on this side uh, inside the Xbox. Now, I do have a previous video that shows you how to disassemble and reassemble an Xbox. And so I will refer you to the end of this video to a link that you can uh, find that video if you've never opened up an Xbox. And that will get you to the point where we have the disk drive in our hands. So please refer to that one uh, and I'll skip ahead to actually holding the disk drive. And there you go, the uh, disk drive is in my hand. Now my particular one is Samsung uh, disk drive. You may actually have a different one, but uh, so this video will show you how to do the Samsung, but the other ones should be fairly similar. And so from here, I just want to turn it around and there's four screws, just some Phillips screws in the back, which I first need to remove. And just holding it together, just kind of flip it over and sort of wiggle out this, this top case there, just like that. And then very carefully flip it over again. Do not touch this laser right there. And then just kind of pop the back off, just like that. And then I put some gloves on so I don't uh, put any grease on this thing. But uh, you kind of want to, this is the laser right here that we want to replace today. Now, uh, again, if you looked at the other video, you can just use a screwdriver here and poke this right here. Put a little pressure on it and this tray will pull out so that will expose the laser and so this here is what we're going to be replacing today now if you uh, are, are, are opening this thing up for the first time and trying to get this fixed one of the first things you want to do is just take a little isopropic alcohol uh, with a q-tip and very lightly clean this laser head right here uh, just uh, if, if it's, especially if it's really dirty and you can actually f visually see that it's dirty this may actually solve your problem just by cleaning that lens and maybe doing some lubrication and cleaning uh, of of this mechanism here so the other thing you could do is actually adjust the power that goes into this laser and this is pretty much a last disc uh, des desperation kind of measure if you flip over your uh, late, uh, your your unit like this, you can see right here that uh, this particular laser, again, it's a Samsung and it's a, uh, SOH uh, D16, I believe, if I can read that right. But so uh, your laser might be a little bit different, and so it may look a little bit different than that. But for this particular laser, you have two potentiometers with little tiny screws. So one right there and one right there. Now, I believe this one's uh, for this uh, laser, that's the CD potentiometer. And this one adjusts uh, the, uh, uh, the DVD. So that's what basically reads the, uh, the games right there. Now your, now your particular potentiometers, uh, may, there might actually only be one on yours and might be on the side uh, and you may actually have to take out your laser to get access to it. But uh, you, you will see these tiny little screws. And uh, if you notice that there's two little spots on each screw, one right there and one right there, which connects to uh, uh, the circuit there. 
And if you actually measure these uh, with a multimeter for resistance, uh, let me just back up here so you can see my multimeter right here. I have it set for resistance ohms. Let's just set this up so you can see this. And this will take a lot of talent. This is These are very small parts. But if I read, let's see, the one for the DVD drive, I'm reading, well, I just had the reading. You might have to kind of wiggle it around to get the reading right. Right now it's 1.8 kilo ohms. And so that's a, that's a decent reading. Any, uh, basically they're supposed to be set to anything uh, less than three kilo ohms uh, out, of the, uh, out of the factory. I believe that the CD one might be a little lower. And again, these are, that's 1.1 kilo ohms. And so one thing you could do is in order to get more power to your laser, you can take a little screwdriver, put it in there and turn these potentiometers very slightly. Like I'm talking maybe 10% or excuse me, 10 degrees turn at a time. I forgot which direction I think it's counterclockwise to uh, increase the power, which would will decrease the ohm. So uh, it was like 1.8. You might want to lower to let's say 1.7 or 1.6 and that will get uh, that will decrease the resistance and therefore more power will get to your laser. Now um, this might work, you want to do it in very small steps because uh, if as you're doing this, you're basically causing your laser to eventually burn out because uh, more power to it, it will burn out more rapidly. All lasers will eventually burn out. So you're reducing the life of your laser. But if it doesn't work completely, then this might actually help solve your problem. I've never actually fixed one of these by adjusting these potentiometers. And I've already adjusted this one down a bit. So I think it was a little over two um, uh, kilo ohms originally. But uh, this might actually work for you. I've heard it work has worked for people. Uh, I've seen a lot of uh, talk on the internet saying that people haven't gotten this thing to work at all, but that's one option. You can just slowly decrease the, uh, the resistance to increase the power, test it out, see if it starts reading those disks. So um, that's one other method, but that didn't work for me. The cleaning didn't work for me. So I, I'm replacing this laser. Okay, so to remove the uh, laser, you wanna flip it over to this side. And again, this uh, your unit might be a little bit different than mine, but you'll notice this little ribbon cable right here. Now that's attached to the circuit board. And that's one of the cables that attach the laser. So what you wanna do is just take your finger. Now there's a little clip right here that you need to loosen up. So you wanna kind of press down on that just like that and it opens up and then this ribbon cable should just slip out. You don't wanna force it out, you wanna make sure that this little clip is open first. And then you wanna flip the unit back over and now you have to kind of remove the circuit board. Now the circuit board has these little, there's no screws, there's just these little kind of pressure clips here that you wanna uh, kind of push out. So I'll do this side first and it just kind of clips it off. Do this side. And there you go. And now with that ribbon cable removed, you can kind of just kind of move the whole thing, kind of sit it, set it aside just like that. And so with that ribbon cable removed, all you need to do is remove uh, two screws here uh, connecting to these bars. And uh, the, the laser should just move around here and you can see a motor right here. Now there is, I believe, one version of these disc drives that actually have a plastic gear. Uh, if you do have that, you actually have to remove uh, like a screw that's uh, attached to this plastic thing right here first so you can actually take it out. But we could take this out for this version with, without removing that plastic thing right now. And so we'll just remove these two screws like that. And then uh, your, your laser should be able just to just kind of move on its own. So we're just gonna kind of lift it up like that and actually just pull, you can pull the bars out at the same time. They, uh, they're just loosely fitted and you can just pull them out here 
and put them aside so you don't lose them. And there you go, your laser is completely removed. Okay, so there's our laser and I did order a new laser online. And again, this, this the only difference is, is this one says it's DR16S. This one's just 16. Uh, the website I did order this from uh, says it is compatible with the 16. So make sure that whatever you purchase is compatible with your existing disk drive. Uh, you don't wanna uh, switch different lasers for different drives. Okay, so here's the old one, here's the new one, and there's one part that you need to take off the old one and put on the new one. And so uh, if we flip this uh, the old one over, you'll notice this little kind of plastic piece. There's a spring and stuff. Uh, there's just one screw. So I'm just going to remove this part right here. Don't lose the screws. Take this off. That aside, flip this over and then put that in its place. So now before we replace this laser, uh, there's one more thing that you need to do and this is important. Now, uh, most of these lasers uh, do come with a protective uh, a solder point. In this case, there's two solder points. So let me um, turn here. And if I zoom in right there, you can see here that there's two solder points, one right there and one right there. Now yours might only have one solder point. Now those are anti-static protection. Basically it bridges a couple of lines to prevent uh, static buildup uh, during transportation. Uh, and, and it basically, uh, the laser diode is very sensitive and so that's just to protect it. Now we're gonna have to undo those. Now, um, some of the documentation on some of these lasers are not that good. The best way to figure out because you could have different soldering uh, blobs like this on your laser. You don't want to just randomly uh, start desoldering things. Go ahead and look at your original laser. Um, if I could focus here, you will see that both of these actually are desoldered and uh, you could see basically, you know, th there's basically a green little strip in between them. So they are no longer bridging those two contacts where the original, uh, where the new one, you can see they're just basically blobs. And so we need to kind of remove those. And I think the easiest way, now you can use some, uh, um, some uh, desoldering wick, but I'm just going to use a hot uh, iron and see if I can just kind of swipe these out. Just kind of move these things off here. And take a closer look at these. Okay, I think these are good. I'm gonna use uh, my multimeter to check for continuity. It'll beep if there is continuity. So I'm just gonna touch both sides of these. And these are completely separate. So, all right, so there's no bridging at all. So they look good. Okay, and so the uh, lens should be ready to be reinstalled. Now, I did check the potentiometers. Um, the one for the DVD is, uh, I believe, at 1.8 kilo, uh, kilo ohms, similar to uh, the old one, but hopefully this laser works better. So um, you just wanna double check because that, you know, coming from the manufacturer, it could be set for uh, something much too low or much too high. So you def definitely wanna double check those. Okay, so next, go ahead and replace the bars. Now you'll notice that the bars are two different sizes. I believe the longer one's on this side. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and then this is on that side. So, um, so the longer one's on that side. And so just take your, your laser, fit this in there just like that. And the other one kind of just fits loosely right like that. 
and then just kind of fit them in their little respective holes on the other side and then lower in place. And then this should kind of clip with the motor. And so when we move this, there we go. The motor's moving just like that. And then there were a couple of plastic pieces that fell off here that go on top like this. And then replace the screws. And so the bars shouldn't jiggle. These kind of go in a certain way, so make sure that they're seated properly. So next we just want to flip back the little circuit board here, put them in the respective clips right here, and just simply push down. Like that. And then go ahead and flip it over because we have to put the ribbon cable back in place here. Is this open? Oh, it's not open, so there we go. And then lock it in place. And I believe it is holding. There you go. So we have that in place. Now for this tray door, you just kind of want to move, kind of just move it back in place and right, right about here, you kind of just want to, kind of with a screwdriver, kind of move this little rod back in place like this, kind of just set it so the whole mechanism raises up. And there you go. So hopefully while you were doing this, you did not touch the laser itself, uh, so it's not dirty. So we'll just uh, go ahead and shut the case. Back side on. And then replace the four screws and reinstall the unit and then test her out. So just as a reminder, uh, my previous video does show how to reassemble the Xbox from this point on. So I'll just go ahead and zoom in uh, past that point and just test the unit out and see if we got a working Xbox. All right, all put together, and let's go ahead and test out the disc. And there you go, it's working just fine. Well, I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please hit that like button at the bottom of the screen, and even consider subscribing to my channel. I have many more videos to come. Bye-bye.